But we're live. I'm not we're live. Mm -hmm. We're live. <laughs> Did I see that little red thing in the corner? Live. What is it? Live. live. That's like we, the big... I've never noticed that before. Has that always been there? Oop. Are you serious? When we go live. No, I'm, I never pay much attention. I usually watch no. that screen. <laughs> so I'm getting everything after it's the right. fact. You guys don't realize this, but Pastor Randy is actually a huge social media fan. Oh, my. He's yes. on there all the time. Oh. He's working hard. He's networking. Yeah, it's tough to He's got a friend, a friends list. Oh, my. Huge friend list. Followers. He's liking. Yeah, oh. He be tweeting. You be tweeting all the time. Oh, my. Yeah, it's, it's tweet, exhausting. Tweet. It's exhausting. It's just yeah. overbearing. <laughs> Who was just bought that? Was well, he didn't. Musk? He didn't. Musk. He didn't. I thought well, he did. He made, he made the didn't. offer, but then he found that their data was not accurate, so he was saying that he's not going to buy it for that price, and now they're suing him to buy it for the price. It was $40 billion. but he's saying that they had a bunch of bogus uh, followers, oh. and so it, it, it's kind of complicated. You know, it, it's just billionaires. Mm -hmm. you know, they, um, they function in a whole different world. Welcome. Q&A. Okay. Hey. Thanks for joining us. We know you've joined us because of that red thing in the top left corner I that never, says live. I repeat so again, I've never noticed that. And just to the right of it is the number of people that are watching. I Normally that gets to about see 25. We start uh, with the, we cut the is, fall to is roll. That, is that number up there, 15? I don't know. I, it's it is. very blurry yeah. to me. Uh -huh. okay. 15 right now, 17? 17, yeah. I, yeah. I can see that. So we'll, what, it just takes a little focus. It does. Once the fall to roll, once that gets to a certain point, the fall to roll. switched again. 18? 18? Yeah, so, so, so we have, what, two 16, more before the fall roll ends? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and share it here. We invite you to do the same. I was just watching Pastor Ruben on my computer, and he was killing it. If you're a new parent, you probably just got this video, kind of a welcome email, letting you know. And he answers these questions. Man, I want to show him. Can I show him a real quick clip of it? Oh, go ahead. I'd like to see it myself. So it starts oh. with, like, fancy... <laughs> Get it, Pastor Ruben. He wrote that song, believe it or not. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> well, hello, friends. It's Pastor Ruben. Excited to be back again and excited to start a new series today that we're calling Just Curious. Now, what we're going to be doing is answering actual questions. See, this is his Q&A. Yeah. This is our Q&A, Pastor Ruben's Q&A. Q&A okay. for kids. He is brilliant. And over the years, I've sorted them into these two like buckets, right? There's questions that are regular we, and extra spicy. We may want to do that. Regular. We may want to have a regular bucket and an extra, extra spicy, spicy bucket. So here's one of the questions. Why are people not animals? Mm, interesting so question. good, right? I've met okay, some that so it's tough the, to tell. <laughs> <laughs> There's the somewhat high British. <laughs> we read that people... So anyways, he goes on to answer the questions. Really cool. If you did not receive this, you're a parent in the church and you'd like it, you can reach out to info at cafrederick. Info at fcfchurch.com. Haven't done that before. That was a new one. And you can uh, request to be added to the kids team list, I think is how you would do that. But another thing is also check your spam or junk mail folder first. So Because sometimes when sending from constant contact, it goes into people's junk so yeah. check your spam folder first it looks like that coming in yeah and mm -hmm. coming from constant contact and you can add us to your to your list but it's fantastic and this is week one so he just started um, really cool really cool stuff I, I was watching a few young children here in my office while their mom was meeting with our new youth pastor mm -hmm. pastor Adam and uh, and I saw Pastor Rubens. So the the three of us, the the four year old, six year old, and and thirty five year old, thirty twenty twenty seven year old. <laughs> no. Well, I, you're very young. <laughs> <laughs> so to make myself younger, yeah. you're saying is not. We watched it, and I was very There's impressed. There's no need at your stage to make yourself any younger. No. So, so blessed to have Pastor Ruben. So check that out. I'm also going to share. Is that also Pastor Ruben right there? No. That looks like <laughs> Liam. What's his name? No, that's um, well, that's from, the guy from, from Frasier. Um, Frasier, yeah. What's his name? Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer. Grammer. Yeah. Have you seen him lately? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He doesn't look like that anymore. Yeah, no. no, none of us do. My mom saw Kevin. Very true. <laughs> my mom saw Kevin Bacon at an airport, and um, he didn't look like Kevin Bacon. He did not anymore. look like Kevin Bacon either. Oh. <laughs> there we are. Okay. Okay. We are we are rolling here. Oh. I got it up. Feel free to share and like. And uh, there's our faces, Pastor Brandy, 
And I need to look up more. So there we go. All right. Shall we fire Pastor yes. Kim? Yeah, we, we have lots uh, of questions. You know what? Let me read the first one. You know okay. why? Because it's easy. Okay. We don't know what's, now, exactly what it's saying. Because you don't know what it means, so I'm just going to make something up. You're going to make something up. Okay. Okay. The question is, do Christians need sinners? Since we don't know for sure what the intent of the question was, I, I'm just going to think that perhaps what he's saying is that do we need the... Uh, stimulation, the friction that mm -hmm. being immersed in, in a sinful society brings us. Does this catalyze growth? Does this stabilize our character? You know, that, that uh, the pressure and our need to resist, th does this help? I guess that's what he means. Uh, perhaps he means that uh, we're called to reach out and make disciples and, you know, you got to have somebody to disciple. I'm, I'm not 100% sure but perhaps that's a good guess until mm -hmm. we get an answer that's specific. All right. Thank you. Sure. Did you, you answer of, the question? Can you think of any other reason why we need centers? Oh, oh, why do we need centers? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, of course, you know, even the category centers, I mean, we, we are also, even as Christ followers, technically, yeah. um, we still sin, but, but I know what he means. We're, we're not, we're not um, sinners anymore in the sense that we don't do so willfully and joyfully and all that kind of thing. So. But we did reach out and ask for clarification, too. We did. So we did. We we did. I left him a voicemail. Okay. We did. Because we're not sure. All right. So. Here's two questions related to the portion of Scripture you shared from Daniel on Sunday. So Shadrach, mm -hmm. Meshach, and Abednego are in the fiery furnace. First question was, um, where was Daniel? I had that exact same question. Started to bring it up in the message, but I felt like, you know, there were so many other things I was trying to cover. Um, we don't have an answer to that in Scripture. Perhaps, I mean, you have to understand, he was part of the, um, the governmental structure, and they had an enormous amount of territory. I mean, you know, the, uh, the Babylonian Empire covered a lot Huge. of territory. He could have been out on an assignment in another part of the kingdom. Um, he could have been off on vacation somewhere mm -hmm. in the kingdom. Just, but but kidding, uh, kidding aside, I think it's more likely that he was out on assignment somewhere else and was not... In proximity to the plain of Dura when this this thing went up, you know. Okay. So, but we don't know. But it's a fascinating question, yeah. and it occurred to me too. It's like, of all places, for yeah. Daniel not to be showing up, yeah. why wouldn't he be here? So, he must have been, uh, you know, involved in something else. That uh, yeah. Did did Steve Barmore ask that question? Alona Mills did. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, I feel like he mm -hmm. asked that question a while ago though, like a year ago. Oh. Do you remember that? No. Okay, but it's possible. But I think he. Di I think he <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. No, it's quite possible. Yep. All right. Okay. So in relation to them being in the fiery furnace, and then there's the fourth right. person in there appears with them, which oh. I found interesting. You you didn't go into a whole lot of that in the message. Was no. Um, it, it it's it's like what angle in the message are you going to take? Yeah. And so that. So yeah. But anyhow, so this person's question was: Was that an angel or was that the Lord? With them. Once again, the text doesn't tell us specifically. Uh, we can speculate. It's probably likely that it might have been the Lord in one of his appearances, uh, as he did in the Old Testament, before yeah. actually taking on human form. But not a necessity. It very well could have, could have been an extraterrestrial. Because yeah. <laughs> all the because that because all angels are extraterrestrials. Right. Yeah. All all the scripture says is that there was just a fourth yeah. person, and he looked like a divine. Uh, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar though does. Just, you know, he, he, he makes clear this person didn't look like the, the other person. Yeah, He's, yeah the, okay. he looked like one of the gods or, yeah. or one of them. So uh, we can assume that it was, a, you know, an angelic being or the Lord, but we don't okay. know. And, and it's pure speculation. Wouldn't change the content or right. the, the, yeah. the meaning of the story. Well, what are, what are other areas in the Old Testament where Jesus um, shows up in, in a, a, a physical a form? Physical form. Probably the most prominent one. Uh, and one of the earliest, it, perhaps it is the earliest, I have to think through a little bit, is in Genesis 18. So um, Abraham's just hanging around the campsite, and the text starts out saying he, he sees these three men approaching. And the text develops, and he says it was the Lord and two angels. Again, two yeah. extraterrestrials, because you know, all angels are extraterrestrials. We need to get used to that thought process. So 
here he is in one of these, um, and I believe it's from his anthropomorphism, where he yeah, he shows himself, um, big you, word. you know, as, as a or, or, or is that the right one? That might not be. No, anthropomorphism is where God right. talks about his hands or like, and, and so it's another term. At any rate, uh, the pre-incarnate, before he takes on the human form that he will carry through all eternity. Now. He shows up in the Old Testament at times. Uh, even sometimes he's called the angel or the messenger of the Lord, but he is the Lord. Yeah. So, anyway. Anthropomorphizes when we give. Yeah, it's when God says, my hands, and, but but it's not like his hands. Is, you know, you're the right hand of the Lord or something like that. It's an anthropomorphism. Giving There's another term for those pre-incarnate visitations of Christ, and I can't think of the term. It's, it's okay. It'll come back to me. I actually had the word... Christophany? That's what I was thinking. Yes. Christophany. Christophany. Yeah. yeah. Is giving human characteristics to God. Which, That's anthropomorphism. Yeah. Which yeah. we do. We, which is, it's not bad for God to do of himself. Right. It is bad when we anthropomorphize God because mm. we think that God does, us basically what That's what Lucifer did. Mm -hmm. He, he projected, pro his, projected own. his own yeah. beliefs and thoughts on, on Christ. It, it, it's a, so. not it's a terrible thing and, I wish I would have recognized this earlier in my life. When we allow a certain uh, frame of mind, a certain attitude, a certain perspective to sneak its way into to our, our lives, mm -hmm. our, our inner world, it is extraordinarily dangerous. We, we, at that point, are susceptible to misinterpret everything and everyone and make catastrophically bad decisions. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I've not until recent years actually seen the extremity or, or extremity of that kind of danger just not protecting our our thought life um, you know as, as carefully as we should so I mean that kind of falls in and this is a little bit of a rabbit trail should a rabbit trail yeah rabbit trail that we were talking about something called the fundamental attribution error yeah. which is a very common thing it's it's more common than its its counterpart. Uh, what, what this is, fundamental attribution error, is that we attribute someone's attitude towards a character flaw as opposed to situational experiences. So on Sunday, I'll just share this because I've only been texted about, uh, I don't know, more times than I care to mention. But we, Jessica was not at the close of service, mm -hmm. right? We are, some might know our son bumped his head. He's doing great, he's awesome, he's fine but he started acting kind of weird, doing some weird things, and so Jessica um, snagged him and took him to the to urgent care, urgent care center to the ER. Again, he's doing great, no cause for alarm. Uh, it was Daniel, uh, in typical Daniel fashion. <laughs> we have boys, they're wild. So, on Sunday leaving service, I digress. When service ended, I had already told the production team, people didn't know where I was going, but I said I have to leave as soon as the service is done. She was at the ER, I put my guitar down, and literally, as fast as I've ever left FCF Church, I, I went, um, left all my stuff around the stage where I was, got in my car, and I passed a couple people on the way and just waved really quickly. And it would have been easy for them to think that I am an antisocial person or maybe even a little bit curt in that moment. But the reason I was so quick to leave was because something outside was influencing me that I had to take, uh, take advantage of. It would be easy to say Pete's uh, an aggressive introvert. He doesn't want to be around people, which couldn't be farther from the truth. That is a very kind fundamental attribution error. A very negative one would be perhaps someone in your family passes away and you actually have a negative interaction with somebody that is a result of the fact that you're dealing with stress and not the fact that you are not a kind person. And so we do this though. When somebody acts mean to us or there's a, an odd, odd interaction, we don't often say, hey, they could be going through something. We judge their character. And it's just, we can't do that. Pastor Kim helps me with that all the time. I think this is what's going on. And she'll say, maybe, maybe not, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not. You ever, you ever gotten into that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it, it's an easy thing to do. And uh, I, I'm sure you know I'm, I'm as prone to it as anyone. So. You're, you're very forgiving in that way, well, though. But that's taken a long cycle of development. I, I was not thing. always... <laughs> So, I mean, I was forgiving, but not as kind of open-minded to the, the complexity of human nature. Now, I, I kind of see things differently. So, it, it took time. It took me a lot, of, a lot of time. That was a rabbit trail. You seem tired this morning. Are you tired? You're, you're, uh, you're, like, do you need something to eat? Well, I haven't eaten, so perhaps that'll Maybe prove that's me. It. Yeah, you, you seem low-key. Seem, seem low-key. Low yeah. yeah, it could be. Could yeah. be. You were low-key in our meeting this morning, too. 
Was it? And, yeah, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Got your blood flowing a little bit, but okay. Okay, here, fire the next, Pastor Kim. I love this one. I've always wanted a tattoo, but I feel guilty about what the Bible says. <laughs> Is it okay to get a tattoo? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wear long sleeves? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, in, in the Old Testament, um, it was forbidden because it, the Lord was trying to differentiate his people from the pagan uh, Canaanite culture around them. And those tattoos meant allegiance to certain gods, goddesses, and all kinds of things. So. He forbid them to get tattoos. There's no forbiddings in the New Testament. And when you get a tattoo today, a, a lot of Christians get tattoos, and they actually become opportunities for conversation. And often people use them as, yeah. as a, you know, kind of a pivotal point to witness to people. So it, there's nothing wrong with getting a tattoo today. Now, you know, you don't want to get something like I love the devil on your arm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you frown on that? Yeah, that, that probably wouldn't be the best. But if your worship leader got like a... Right here. That, huh? that wouldn't necessarily be bad. <laughs> For Tyson? Got no, it. no, that wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily be bad. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good one. Status of the housing project. I'm going to assume they're talking about Cindy. the house. That was my assumption, Cindy. Fast. Yeah, and last I heard, I guess it's September. Or? Yeah, I met with Cindy. Actually, we had dinner together last Friday evening. Oh, had so a sweet. great time. And um, I got, I'll tell you a side note to that one, too, in a moment. But... Uh, yeah, she says she's hope. They're hoping now it's September. She says like it's constantly. You know, you think with a project like that, it's huge. So you think yes. You know, beginning of summer we're going to be able to. Okay, it's going to look like August. And she's like, I hate this, but now it's looking more. Actually, it's even more closer to like October, November. Oh wow. So yeah. Okay. And, and she explained just different things mm -hmm. that come up or whatever. So okay. Um, but they're super excited and they're still plugging away. I mean, they're getting things in place mm -hmm. and um, it's staffing. I think and that's their next big thing is to hire yep. then the staffing they've got their main house manager person but then the people who will be right you know. yeah yeah if, because that's like a 24-hour thing yeah. so mm -hmm. that's not going to be an easy thing to staff you know? if you're if you're just just either yeah. new to fcf may not know steadfast is a home on our property that we are partnering with um fcf church is partnering with steadfast can you give me the acronym acronym for or, or, it, it is a standing Together oh, standing against together youth. against youth homelessness. That's not, yeah. Yeah, so like, sorry, Cindy, we love you, you're the best. Yeah. Uh, but there's a, a large house on our property that we are using, partnering with them, and it's for people that come out of the foster care system and don't have a place to stay. So we're, we're, we're working with them, and Cindy is incredible. It's, it's a nonprofit standalone, and we're pumped to be able to work with Cindy Morgan and Steadfast. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Which we wish we could remember the acronym for it, though. It I'm is. I'm not sure it is an acronym. It's not an acronym. Though. I it's think, just... like, she has her phrase, but I don't think it's... Yeah, it is standing together against youth homelessness. Yeah, so I don't think it was meant to steadfast itself okay. to be an acronym. I don't think. Okay, probably. I just made that up. Well, it was close. Good. It was Yeah. <laughs> the first couple of words. The first couple together. letters worked really Standing great. together <laughs> against. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the, the funny, yeah, the, fun thing about that evening, she talked about that, and then um, <clears throat> another person was there, April, who serves in Sprouts. Cindy serves in Sprouts. They both serve in the three- and four-year-old. The two of them just sharing stories about kids oh. and just how much they love it and then sharing ideas. Well, this works when I do small group. These two people just sit there talking about serving in the three- and four-year-olds and how much they love it. It was just, it just that's, warmed my heart. That's I'm really like, nice to hear, yeah. Super special. That's just yeah. what that was, that was Zoe's to... class. Zoe just moved yeah. to Miss Alona's class. Oh, yeah. But she was in that class with Miss yeah. Cindy. and love, Loves, loves, loves those yeah. teachers. Well, I'll tell you another quick story. Cause, and I say this because we are recruiting for kids ministry right now, okay. too. And so you just don't know the impact you have sometimes. So my friend April, she serves in that. And there's one little girl, I think her name's Leah or something. And this little girl, she's constantly saying, Leah, don't do this. Leah, don't do this. Leah, you need to come <laughs> yeah. sit down. You know, always feels like she's It just, wasn't Zoe? No, it, it wasn't was Leah. Zoe. <laughs> sure? But then one day the parents picking her up and she's like, you're Miss April. Leah talks about you all the time. <laughs> Leah loves you. And so here she thinks she's just telling this little girl, you know, and yet she's having this, mm -hmm. the it's parent would just love to meet her. It's like, I she's having an impact. Yeah, well, sometimes kids just delight in attention. Yeah. You know? yeah. So even if it's dumb. She keeps saying my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like her. Okay. Fantastic. Are Next question. On? Yes. All right. This person had a conversation with a Muslim friend. Is it true that Allah represents who Nebuchadnezzar 
was. Okay, here we go. No, because we destroyed the temple. If so, why would the Bible and the Quran share large portions of the similar scriptures to mislead that Allah is the real King of Kings when it's truly Jesus Christ? Jesus wasn't a prophet of Allah, but he was in his divine incarnation to God the Father, I and the Father one. Yeah, I, I read that question two or three times, and I'm not sure I know what the question is. Um, the, the, the reference to Allah representing Nebuchadnezzar, that doesn't, Never heard it that doesn't make, no, it doesn't make sense. I mean, you gotta understand Islam came along uh, somewhere around 629 or so AD. So it was way, way after the New Testament had been complete mm -hmm. and it wouldn't have any association with the Old Testament. So I'm just not following that question. And uh, I, I don't know if they're looking at it from a typological standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, but that still wouldn't make sense because Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple, but that has nothing to do with Allah. I mean, unless they're thinking of when um, during the Crusades, you know, Islam mm -hmm. took the Holy Land and possessed it for a while. Um, I, I just, so I'm, I'm sorry, like, but I don't quite yeah, understand. If, if the person who wrote this, if there's some clarification you could give to where the information is coming from or whatever. You know, from, from a standpoint of, you know, contrasting Christ and uh, Islam, I mean, it, Islam is very um, dogmatic in saying that there is but one God, and, that, and that's mm -hmm. Allah. And, uh, you know, they, they don't, even though Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, he is talked about as one of the, the prophets, and they don't at all... Um, except the fact that he died on a cross at all. And, um, you know, they do talk about he will return, and he will return with uh, this entity they call the Mahdi, and he'll help um, fight and convert Christians to Islam. Mm -hmm. So, but, but other than that, there's no, they don't believe that Jesus is God, number one. There's one God, Allah, yeah. and Muhammad is his prophet. That's, that's their deal. So it's a very exclusive, um, you know, religion and it's a very militant religion as I said on Sunday mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm not sure about the rest of it yeah here. okay All right. sounds good now Jesus was considered a prophet though wasn't he as well in in Islam mm -hmm. yes yep yeah but again they don't uh, they don't accept his divinity they yeah of course they, uh, they don't uh, <clears throat> believe in his crucifixion it's uh, yeah, it, it's he was a the, teacher. The, again, if you look at the demonic aspect of Islam, it's very clever because they associate themselves to Abraham, they associate themselves to Jesus. They they pick and choose pieces of, of Christianity, and then they weave this web of Islamic, you know, behavior that's so counter to everything <coughs> in either Old or New Testament. But they they gain some credibility by acknowledging both Abraham and, and Jesus, you know, and enough to confuse people that don't, you know, put the time in to, to research some of these things. So. A good lie has a little bit of truth. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're gonna say, Pastor Kim? Yeah. Well, actually I was thinking, where is it in the scriptures about the world religions coming from Satan? I remember. Um, yeah, it's in Deuteronomy. It, it, it's not a direct connection, but it, but it talks about, uh, the pagan nations are sacrificing to demons yeah. okay so you got to construe you know put all this together and the notion that um, since Satan is the father of lies and all mm -hmm. false religions with a little bit of truth most of them uh, are part of this conglomerate of lies that are meant to draw people to himself instead of toward God and the fact that sacrifices which were part of the, the Canaanite religion or off of the demons instead of you know to the gods and goddesses. So you have to do a little thought. It's not like there's one okay. verse that Something specifically nice. says. I know, yeah. I, mm -hmm. okay. I like it. Here's another great question. Am I going to go to hell for listening to heavy metal and <laughs> rock and roll? I do not worship them or jump up and down at them at concerts, but I do enjoy the music without a doubt. My truly favorite band is FCF on Sunday morning. <laughs> My son and I sit in the front row every Don't Sunday. let her finish, let her finish. I love Jesus, and he is who is I worship. So, you know, you had talked about worship and gave you that examples of, of worshiping con at concerts and stuff. Anyhow, so heavy metal, don't rock and Well, roll. no one... We'll, we'll, we'll go to hell, and, I, and I'm yeah. lesser and lesser comfortable with some of our thoughts about what does it mean to go to this. Yeah. But anyway, um, for any choice of music, 
Uh, even if you like opera, you won't be sent to hell. <laughs> How about country? Country. <laughs> well, 50, 50. <laughs> rap. It's changed. It's changed. I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to make myself more odious than I am. These are these are more stylistic jokes he's uh, making, other not cultural. actual <laughs> theological uh, orthodox. No, teaching. of course not. The answer to that is uh, your your musical taste. It's probably something you picked up as a teenager, mm -hmm. and you're more. Uh, it's more the result of you like a certain sound and rhythm and, and style of music. It's yeah. not like you're into the lyrics necessarily. So, uh, yeah, no, don't worry. And again, no one gets sent to hell. Hell is a designation or, or a destination for people that belong there. They are fit only for one one destination. And when you trust in Christ and become His follower, you're not fit for the fiery destruction. Um, but you're only fit for a place where God's will is done, which is heaven. But we, we, we think of these mechanistic ways, this contract, sign on the dotted line thing, and these judicial declarations, and, and I'm less and less comfortable with that kind of thought. There's a question later on that almost says the exact same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The person is um, concerned about going to heaven, and what they should be more concerned about is, am I attracted to Christ? Mm -hmm. do, do I see anything in him that draws me toward him, that that uh, causes me to trust him and, and want to know him and want to be like him? If that is what's happened, well then you, of course, are going to go, if you want to use the term, go to heaven. Uh, but if you just want to go to heaven, yeah. you're now, yeah. you're, you're literally uh, losing the very thing that you want because you're you're evading the one way which is which is Christ if you're not authentically attracted to Christ God as he's revealed himself in Christ you're not going to be you're not going to be comfortable in heaven you're you're going to be a misfit go go ahead you might as well you know read that question because okay i was going to say well, that with the music the to a little something just to add though but as Christ followers it's always music tv movies all those things we still need to go is does this benefit me is this for my good is it does it have a detrimental effect on my mind you were talking about mm -hmm. earlier so it's always healthy and good for us to ask those questions about yeah yeah you know. and, and music is a powerful thing I mean you know I, I was brought up in the rock culture and everything and when I first turned to Christ for years um, I did not listen to any secular music because it had such a grasp on me mm -hmm. that it would bring back old memories and things. Yeah. And uh, I, I just knew I didn't want to go there anymore. You know, as I got older in Christ, I, I could hear stuff and it didn't mm -hmm. didn't affect me. But there was a time when it affected me greatly. You know, so um, it has a pull, like you say. Yeah, so we have to caution, caution is out. appropriate. Yeah. So listening to stuff that has a lot of pornography, uh, pornography, profanity in it, things that mm -hmm. have a lot of. Um, yeah, I, I have a hard time with that. I don't mean to be an old fuddy-duddy, but it, it, it's just, honestly, it's hard for me to understand why any Christian, because some of the vulgarity in music today, I don't know why, I mean, I, I okay, I want to I wanna be, I wanna be forthright here. Do I watch some movies that have some profanity? Absolutely. I just kind of block it out. It doesn't affect me, so perhaps that's their same thought. They like a certain style of music or a certain beat, but I don't know. Usually, there's a thematic connection when they're using the vulgarity. Usually, there's there's a theme that that is, that is counter and vulgar. But of course, I suppose you could say that for movies too. Mm -hmm. Somebody's always getting killed in the movie. Mm -hmm. You have no movie unless you kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but being careful, we put in. So just cells. just be cautious. Yeah, uh, some things we can kind of check off is there innocent entertainment that don't bother us but but just be cautious because sometimes things do affect us more than we're willing to acknowledge at certain periods in our life you know? yeah and by the way you said you don't want to be an old and then you and then you use the expression fuddy duddy yeah by using fuddy duddy <laughs> that makes me an old fuddy duddy you, i think you literally did the opposite the fact of that i you. know such a term as fuddy duddy yeah. Determines that I am one because no one knows what a fuddy duddy is. They never heard of a fuddy duddy. I think you legitimately, like in that okay. moment, let me, classified let me, yourself. Let me, in, try to, in that. let me try to give you the roots. There was this cartoon character named Elmer Fudd. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And he was always trying to get the wabbit. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I suspect that fuddy duddy originated from that oh, 19, Elmer Fudd. that 1950s, late 1940s cartoon caricature I'm have to Google that. of Elmer We're need Fudd. Now, I just made no, this up. Somebody, but, no, somebody no. needs to tell us But it comment. feels right. It's Origin just, of Fuddy Duddy. <laughs> Look it it up. just 
It just felt right. And I spun a yarn. Can I spin you a yarn? Spin, you spin, I'm spinning a yarn here. <laughs> spinning a yarn. You, you haven't told us anything. People oh, there's all kinds of stuff on here. I'm all busy. That. Jackie Smith, hello. AJ, what's going on? Cindy Janelle, one of our amazing teachers. Hello. She's away. She's like she, in Keysacker country. What's she doing? She's in West Virginia. Oh, in the see? wild, wonderful she West Virginia. She sent me a Virginia. picture of Keysacker Realty, and she's like, are these your people? <laughs> I said, of course they're my people. They're my cousins. My peeps. Everybody that? over there is my cousin. Well, AJ, I Jackie. I thought of it quite like that, uh, but that's probably true. Uh, uh, Mark Stoniker. What's up, buddy? Awesome. Carolyn Holbrook. Tracy says, a little late, but here. Good afternoon, pastors. Oop, oop, oop. It's jumping again. Hey, I, I have an uh, idea. Is Becky on there, Becky Allhouse? All because all I, or, 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 Say it again. All, 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 all tall. All tall. I'm sorry. Because I owe a conversation to her because... Do you want to uh, go ahead and have that now? <laughs> Hey guys, just well, hold on for a second. Well, Pastor Rainey is going to talk. I'll be well, back. I, I don't get, know. I haven't eaten lunch on. yet. Maybe I'll hit. She often is on. She is. You get one. You get one. Alexa, of, Alexa, Alexa. 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 Buy on. toilet paper. Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but but um, you know we have this new puppy, and of course I was talking for a long time with Becky about buying one of her German Shepherds, but you know my You're wife was, was 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 yeah well that too. <laughs> My wife was less and less about getting German Shepherd because you know they can they can be difficult in various ways. Anyway, we have one as it is. So out of the blue, I had given up on another puppy altogether, and out of the blue, my wife one day says, "What if we got this?" And she shows me these Saint Berdoodles, mm -hmm. and I was so eager for any big dog, I said, "Yes, yes." And yeah. So that that's how we. <laughs> We got into the Saint Berdoodle world. That's also what Instead happened of, to the old uh, orbital, what yes. orbital bone. There. That is what happened. I was uh, trying to protect my little Saint Berdoodle and teach him how to go up the stairs, and forgot to teach myself how to go up the stairs. Is it, is it true the reason you got the dog is because it was holy? It was a saint. Or it had already yeah. reached sainthood. <laughs> what was what was the miracle? Because you got you got to have a miracle. Right. Yeah, that's you gotta right. Be a holy life. But <laughs> no, but uh, no, okay. But uh, what, what we wanted, we, we wanted a very easy to raise dog and ones that are known to be very, you know, gentle and mm -hmm. you know, good with little babies and all that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. So that's what, what uh, motivated my wife. And when she showed me, the, the, when I saw their pictures, I was just like, oh, they're just, mm -hmm. they're, they're almost look like they're stuffed animals, mm -hmm. even the large Gun ones. They, they look like they smile. I mean, yeah. they're, they're just, they're, they're <laughs> German, German shepherds, man, they're like a regal dog, yeah. man. They're yeah. just they're just stunning. Majestic. But these guys look like something little you jokesters. see in the, in the circus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little yeah. jokesters in there. And uh, I thought, yes, Saint Berdoodle, yes. <laughs> a little levity. Uh-huh. Like your associate pastor, a little levity. Yeah, it's just kind of sweet. Look at him, and you're like, I kind of want to laugh right now. I don't know what it is, yes. something uh -huh. about his face. Yes. <laughs> it makes me get and, and, and the thought that they can't get big, too, makes it, to me, even funnier. And, and I oh, just, I get swole. I just like the like big, big dogs, man. You can just grab them, and you you know yeah. you're hugging something, you know. And I have a little dog, too. But, what do you say about um, Leafy? Oh, no. <laughs> what are you saying about Leafy? Leafy, the, uh, there is a, a cool thing about little dogs because they can jump up in your lap. Big dogs mm -hmm. cannot do that, or you don't want yeah. them to do that. We were in a meeting with somebody the other day, and their dog was sleeping on their lap, the paw <laughs> kind of hanging down. Oh, Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Damien Finnefrox, uh, Finney Frox says, Love lunch with you guys from your tattooed Van Halen fan. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Don Wiles is one of the guys that asked one of our questions. Yeah. So there has to be donuts and nachos, right? Ah. Uh, donuts and nachos. I missed that. Enlighten me, Donald. What are we talking about? Oh, remember nachos, and then you followed up with donuts or something? Oh, oh yeah. But it was about giving. Did we talk about giving today? Not no. today. Okay, time. I don't know. Uh, and then Kevin Gardner, great friend, great teacher, actually teaches New Life, says, thank you for staying up and addressing the hard topics with honesty. It is refreshing to actually hear the truth. Can I get it? Amen. Oh, amen. We love That's you, boss. Very kind. Thank Lisa thank says, hello, German Shepherds are the best. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm officially, I missed them at the top, okay. but I'm caught up. All right. All right. Next question. Okay, I, I, I think this connects the one you were mentioning about heaven before. Mm -hmm. So That's someone's husband has uh, been attending, watching, so li uh, watching online at least. Uh, they're lo both are learning so much. Um, husband did not grow up in a church. We had a discussion the other night. I mentioned that I enjoyed the sermon. He turned to me and said the last couple months it has been said that devotion is needed to go to heaven, mm -hmm. that it takes more than just being a good person and that won't get you into the heaven. 
I told him that we can and need to do more. He said that he is trying, but he said that Jesus forgave the two being the two men being crucified with him, which it was only one of them, right? Yeah. And they had spent their life sinning. I told him the difference is perhaps that we know what we should be doing. Any advice? Yeah, um, I, I, I want to be careful how I answer this because the, the notion we have to do more, yeah. it, it, it makes me cautious that this person thinks they have to earn yeah, or, yeah. or merit. Yeah. Um, Transactional their, faith. Yeah, yeah, their, their, their place in heaven. And, of course, the Bible never says it. The Bible simply says God has now revealed himself fully to us in Christ, particularly his sacrificial death on the cross, and now he waits to see if we are drawn to him and will we put our trust in him and become his follower. Life cannot work unless finite beings, created beings, are uh, in a union with the infinite creator. Where, where yeah. In other words, he, when he gives us commands or exhortations or warnings, it is based out of love. It's the only way life can work. So obedience is something that's necessary for life in the universe to stay harmonious. But God wants us to be motivated to obey him only because we trust him. So I'm not obeying him to earn a place in heaven. I'm not obeying him because I'm afraid he'll curse me. I'm obeying him because he has won my trust and I just can't help myself anymore. I'm, I'm drawn to Jesus. Everything I see in him draws me. So we don't go to heaven um, because we've earned it, we've worked for it, we, we are more devoted or something like that. However, when a person authentically trusts in Christ, it will manifest itself in increasing devotion to him. Mm -hmm. But don't, for this, for this questioner, don't get those confused because if, if you think you have to ratchet up your devotion to earn God's um, offering you a place in heaven, that, that's not what scripture teaches and that will lock you in to a self-destructive cycle and will actually take you further from God than closer. Christ waits for us to say, you have won my trust. I, I do trust you and I will follow you and I'm following you freely. I'm going to follow you fully and I'm going to follow you forever. At that point, we're, we're saved. Now, there is a danger in this question that I mentioned before. When we get fixated on just getting to heaven, when our question is, okay, man, what do I got to do to get to heaven? I mean, I don't want to go you know, down. I want to go up. Mm -hmm. Well, we have by that frame of mind almost, I hate to say it, we're, at least for, the, for that immediate time, we've destroyed the potential of authentically coming to trust in God as he's revealed himself in Christ, which then qualifies us, and that's not even a good term, but, but positions us where we would be a good fit for heaven. Uh, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. We, we have so monkeyed this up with, you know, given this notion that you sign on the dotted line, you ask Jesus to come into your heart or something like that, and everything is hunky-dory, and, and nothing can be further from the truth. God made us for authentic relationships with himself. The relationship is based on trust, and it's a relationship that that trust produces obedience or, or following. So if I aim at heaven, I actually miss heaven. If I put my trust in Christ, well, then I am fit for no other place other than where he is, yeah. w w which is heaven. And I hope I'm not overcomplicating this, but I am very fearful of churches being full of people like this, that they just want to make sure their ticket is punched, they bought their yeah. fire insurance, they, they make sure they go ahead. So, so that's a very... Um, mercenary approach to God. It, it's a very um, uh, appeasement oriented yeah, approach. Appeasement. It's like, okay, what do I got to do? What do I got to sign? What do I got to say? Do I have to sing a song? Do I have to give some money? You know, do I have to add some devotion? Do I, do I need to read my Bible every day, go to church? What does it take for me to earn my position in heaven? Because I want to make sure, you know, I get to heaven. Well, well that's a very self absorbed approach. And all I'm, I may not like God at all, I may not trust Christ at all, but I do care about my skin and I want to make sure that my skin is going to be okay that very attitude negates the potential of a person ever authentically trusting Christ I mean we either we either look at him and as he's revealed himself in, in God's word and say I do trust you and I, I want to follow you if I don't want to follow him because I don't trust him heaven would be a mismatch I, I'm, I'm a misfit mm -hmm. at that yeah. point so it's not that we perfect ourselves and, and prepare ourselves for heaven, but it's it's simple as have we have we put our trust in Christ and have we become his follower? That's the question this man needs to be asking himself. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not attracted to Christ but I'm attracted to heaven, 
that's problematic, mm -hmm. uh, okay? Because you're, you're not really going to be happy were you in heaven, because why would you be happy in heaven if you're not attracted to Christ uh, in this life, mm -hmm. but you just want to make sure that you're not going to be in a painful place? Yeah. <laughs> what about the, the two men on each side of Jesus on the cross? Yeah, Maybe um, the, only one of them did Jesus say, this day you'll be with me in paradise. The, the thief turns to him and he says, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. So he, he is seeing Jesus dying on a cross, but he, he knows. He, mm -hmm. he, he evidently knew about Jesus' previous ministry, yeah. three years, you know, Jesus going around teaching, doing miracles, and he knew that God was present in Jesus. And so he calls him Lord, even as he's being crucified, Jesus says, this day, you'll be with me in paradise. He does not say that to the other fellow who was scorning and mocking Jesus on the cross. Now Jesus did say to those around him, crucifying him, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. That doesn't seem to have applied to the other mm -hmm. fellow on, on the cross. Now, having said that, God is forgiving dispositionally toward mm -hmm. everyone, but we can disqualify ourselves from the enjoyment of living uh, in, in a, a forgiven place, or the place That's where good. the forgiven live. You know. Say that so, again. Uh, we, we, we can disqualify ourselves from living in a place where the forgiven will dwell for eternity. He's dispositionally. So, so he's dispositionally, um, he, he, he's forgiving toward all, but we may, not re we may not gain the benefit of that forgiveness unless we put our trust in him and, and follow him. That's good. Uh, I, I, I feel like I'm overcomplicating, but I'm trying to actually simpl yeah. simplify it. Yeah. Because it, yeah. it is as simple as, like I say, again and again, the Acts 16, 31, what must I do to be saved? Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. So for this gentleman, and this, and this lady too, don't be thinking about you gotta go run <coughs> higher and jump, or jump higher and mm -hmm. run faster. You, you don't have to ratchet up your devotion. Put your trust in Christ, become his follower, and your devotion will it's ratchet just, up. It's, just, it, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's like yeah. generosity is demonstrated through giving. I mean, you, that's, mm -hmm. it seems like an odd, but your actions demonstrate where your heart is. Yes. Yeah. This is what I'm getting at with that. Yeah. So. I'm gonna keep us going just because it's already I, 1.15. Okay. I think you should. I think you should ask one more question and see if there's one that is that is in reference to this, to this week. It's time sensitive, maybe based on the message. Can you peer through that while you while you pare that down? You mentioned something, um, an expression. There's two now. You said old fuddy duddy, and then <laughs> and then everything is uh, hunky hunky do door hunky door. Yeah, man, that's a good one. That's a, while she that's, while she that's, that's, a, that's a 40s 50 expression. Does somebody 50s. know what this hunk? Hun Hunky. hunky. Now, by, by the way, I'm not calling anyone a hunky. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's an old expression. Dory. Hunky dory. 40s and 50s, hunky dory. It was just. Hunky, yeah, hunky it, 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 it was just a way of saying everything is cool. Everything's okay. Yeah. Every, everything's the way you would like. I, I want you to answer this one. In Exodus, what does it mean by shall not boil a kid's. Yeah, and when, I saw, when I saw that one, I thought to myself. You know, all Where I can is do is wager a guess. Uh -huh. It just seemed like a very cruel thing to do. And interesting, the scripture does talk about that the righteous man even cares for his animals. Um, so uh, I, I think that is nothing more than it just seemed like um, Where, it a hideously it's, cruel thing. It could have been contrasting. Shall not boil. It said a, a kid's or a kid. Well, it's, it's, it's talking about, milk. yeah, yeah, it's talking about a, um, a, a, a goat calf milk. or goat or something, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and perhaps it was even a pagan practice that oh, God yeah. was contrasting the mm -hmm. nation with. So all I can do is guess. Okay. I didn't read any of these before we started, by the way. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there anything else that There's one per pertains to you. Would you like it? Sure. I don't know. Is it bad? Is it good? Is it bad? What did I say? <laughs> uh, if I maybe so old Pastor Pete uh, has a heart and talent for worship, have you given any thought to writing and producing your own worship songs and material? Uh, mm. I see Hillsong, Elevation, da da da. But hasn't God given us our own song? Isn't mm. there a burning message? Isn't there a burning message on the hearts of the worship team that God wants to pour out to the rest of us? Man, should I answer it? It's, it's aimed at you. <laughs> I can't answer it. <laughs> we actually do and have written worship music uh, in this in this season that we've been in at FCF. It has been, ex been busy, haven't it's you? been incredibly, we actually do a couple songs on Sundays yeah, that, that you would know. One we did when we... Um, yeah, one is one of my favorites. I love it, man. I mean, the, the fast one. Yeah, yeah like Hope Dealer. Hope Dealer. Um, when we prayed for 
the war going on overseas, we sang a song called um, called "God We Pray." That's, That's an right. original song that we that we that we wrote. Uh, I do believe Pastor Rain and I talked about it a long time ago, um, way back when I was interviewing. Which seems like long, long, a long. It's long, only it's, it's only two years I ago. Know, it I seems know. like it's a long, long. It I think a lot's happened in a couple of years, which is wonderful because it's helped yeah. me to forget a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> but but absolutely, I think I think there will be seasons where we're Man, it's just been so exciting to see God for Pastor Randy, myself, Pastor Kim, to be praying for God to to help us build the team. We we actually feel like we're, well, I would say it this way. I don't mean to, I think we're firing on five of eight cylinders. And it's going to be really exciting to see how, how God uses Pastor Reuben, how God used Pastor Adam. We've got a lot of outreach stuff that's starting to to. Yeah. To blow, even the steadfast and some other ministries, there's a some some stuff that's going on within school and and yeah. some stuff you'll hear in the near yeah. future. You will actually be talking about that this, yeah. sun, this, this Sunday, Sunday, right? So really, oh, really ex- the program this Sunday, talking ex- about exciting it. pieces of it. So all of that to say, we love writing music. One of the things, um, uh, the song Hope Dealer, we we sat down and wrote it in, a, in an evening one time. Um, so all that to say, it is it is something that takes time. We're also I'm a parent first. That's like my number one, m- number one thing is being a good dad. And a lot of times when I'm home at night, which is generally when we write, we're with uh, with our kids at a very very important age. I absolutely believe there's two songs that were were kind of in the hopper that are thoughts that we had. And I'll be honest, even some of what Pastor Randy has shared this ministry philosophy, I've never even told him this, but um, that God has the way He articulates things, the way He speaks, the way He talks, even phrases that are in His heart. I'd love to write a song called "Fully, Freely, and Forever" that talks Ooh, about wow. following Christ and using some of the FCF um, nomenclature, verbiage, however we articulate things here. I would love to see those those pieces in a song. And wow, and, I would too. And uh, yeah. Leo, who's our musical director, is phenomenal. Leo helped write um, "Hope Dealer." Leo also. We, he didn't. He doesn't. We recorded it before he got any credit for it. But Leo wrote one of the lines in "God We Pray." We've written tons of music. A, a short answer to it is is yes. We have absolutely thought about it. And right now in the season that we're in, it is not the most important thing. It's not at the top. It's not the lowest. You get this bucket in ministry. I'm, I'm gonna throw this out there. <laughs> and like this cup, right? And and there's holes all in the cup. And so you're filling you're filling the cup, and then there's water coming out. You're like I gotta fix that hole. And you stick your finger in that one, and then you keep getting higher and higher up. That that hole is like over here, and we're still like right in here. So we're going to get there. It's just lower on the cup. There you go. Anything, a little weird. I'm making lower illustrations too much. Lower on the cup. That's good. So, that's good. Yes, we love love music. I think that's probably a yeah. decent one to close on. Well, I, I mean, we've got three questions that we just want to hold them. For next I think week. so. Were, 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 they, were they simple, easy? Or, or? No, I think you'll... See, because I mean, you'll say they're simple. It looks like you do have. Oh, that I wanted to give that person. Okay, okay. Get that one. Get that do one. you have any yeah. Christian authors' books recommendations oh. that look at modern science through a Christian lens? Ooh. I find yeah. the subject fascinating. Worry that the authors are very opinionated. I wouldn't want to be influenced by non-biblical non-biblical analysis of teachings. Books mm. that you recommend. I should have brought my glasses. Let me borrow your glasses. Mm. Okay, I, I want to recommend one book to you. It's called Reflections on the Existence of God by Richard E. Simmons the third. Uh, it, it deals totally with this kind of a scientific, uh, it, it covers multiple subjects, multiple e- e- essays. There's a way here. <laughs> Just wanna capture that moment. Okay, Reflections on the Existence of God by Richard Simmons. But then I, I wanna suggest somebody else. Uh, Hugh Ross is an uh, astrophysicist and he has a website. You can find it on reasons.org. Reasons, plural, reasons.org. And it's called uh, reasons to believe. He's written books um, from again the scientific uh, point of van- vantage point, and a lot to do with uh, Christian apologetics. Two good sources, man. It, it, it'll lead you to other books that they talk about. Thank you. They work perfectly, no, by the way. Good, you're good. <laughs> I was able just so you, in case I was, I was able to <laughs> capture that moment <laughs> to live for all eternity. Pastor Randy and Pastor Kim's glasses. Yeah, I never knew that, that our eyes matched yeah, up like that. You're just my readers. So Donald yeah, Wallace, prayer request um, for prayer warriors getting arthroscopic bicep surgery. Um, oh. So we're going to be praying for you, Donald, for sure. I, he, he's one of our questioners, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, uh, this person says, 
Woo-hoo, so glad I don't have to fear hell and can go to the Steve Miller Band <laughs> and John <laughs> Jeff concert. That's a, good, that's a good old group, man. That's a good, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm surprised that she would remember Fancy Guy because she doesn't look old enough. I think this is a <laughs> reference. That's my era. Is, is your, <laughs> yeah. this, this is a reference to, I believe, either Fuddy Duddy or Hunky Hunky Door. Is it hunk? It's Hunky. Hunky. H U N K Y. Perhaps. Did yeah, anyone did, did anyone Google yeah. this yet? I always thought it was H U. Hunky Door. Hunky. Yeah, yeah. That's how I always said it. Hunky H O is rather yeah, than that. That started in the seventies. We wanted to use that one. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was car wash days. The seventies. Uh, uh, I believe Miss B says you speak her language. <laughs> uh, a lady named Shelley, Kieseker. Hmm. I don't know who that is. Uh, she said, our mamma said, honky dory all the time. She did. I mean, everything is just fine. Everything's just, yeah, yeah. Everything's just fine. Yeah. Honky yes. dory. God, we pray, is absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you, honey. Honky dory means in the English dictionary. Someone's on it. Okay, here we go. You ready? Here it is. This is what it is. If events or situations are now this says hunky dory, H U N K Y, which would you thought? Okay. They are very satisfactory and pleasant. See? Yeah. There we go. Did, did, did they give any idea when that originated? I'm assuming Dar like in the Darcy. 40s. With Mammal. With Mammal. <laughs> Darcy, give us a reference to it. Yes, Pete, I love the idea for songs. Oh, Miss Debbie Shepko. She's going to come visit sometime. Oh, We're going to make, make her sing with us for yeah. sure. Yes, yes. That'd be awesome. When it was the hospital in the last time I played her song on the loop, we get through the. Oh. She's saying something complimentary about music. If, if somebody wants to throw um, God We Pray in the loop, you could. I still say hunky dory, says Miss Debbie Shevko. There you go. Hunky dory. Okay. So we have two questions we didn't get to. We'll save them for next week. We'll hit them, hit them next week. You can also throw your questions in there. Um, if you Google whoever's asking about the song, if you Google God We Pray or Pete Jalot or Hope Dealer, Jess, Jess or Pete Jalot, G-I-L-L-O-T-T. -T. You can see some of our music. They are on um, every digital platform, Spotify, iTunes, all those things. So thank you for your kind words. Good times. Join us on Sunday if you didn't hear. We said it at the beginning. We'll say it again at the end. Two new people that we have. Actually, there's a third person we just hired. We met with them yesterday. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's exciting too. It's not a it's not a, it's not a, pa a pastoral position. Yeah. Incredibly important position. You were telling about our two two new pastors, Pastor Kim. Give it to them. They're awesome. They're awesome. <laughs> right, we hired a children's pastor and we hired a uh, youth pastor. Yeah. They'll be here on Sunday. Love for you to take a second and meet them. This week, new series or uh, same series. New message is third week. Uh, what, what is it? It's the Lord rules the rulers. Rules the rulers. Yeah. Sometimes we feel like we're in a hostile culture that's out of control because of the leadership in the culture, but what we need to remember, no matter how powerful they may seem to us and how controlling, the Lord rules the rulers, yeah. and he holds them accountable, and sometimes we get to see that. And sometimes we have to wait. Fantastic. Plan to join us on Sunday. Anything else, Pastor Ken? I'm hungry. I'm starving. I can't starving. Really think. I'm so hungry. I'm not I'm thinking right clearly. I'm starving. Hunky dory. It'll be hunky dory. 1860s. Wow. 1860s. Wow. That's amazing. I would like to know. How about Fuddy Duddy? If somebody can run that one down, when I, did that originate? I would like I'm to, still thinking that's Elmer Fudd. We might have to start with I'm that. Still thinking. I would like to know the origin. Right, What's yeah. the etymology of that word? Yeah. Where did fuddy duddy? Either one, hunky dory or fuddy duddy. Well, they, didn't they just give you at the 1860s that it was? No. Yeah, that's when it came up. I, so, uh, like Abraham Lincoln was going People are texting me and saying hunky dory. If you're if you're texting me, <laughs> put it in the chat because I'm having trouble reading the text. Someone it asking would be about, hunky dory. Should we pass this legislation? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <motion. laughs> if if you're texting me, shoot it in the comments. I'm having trouble reading both, so I'm getting texts about music and this popping up. It's an adjective has been around since. It just says it's an adjective. <laughs> so thrilled that we invest in our kids. Four Amen. score, and so many years ago, it was hunky dory. Hunky dory. <laughs> Before the war started, it was hunky dory. Oh, she's gonna be here in September. Good. Miss oh, Debbie will wow. be here in September. Give us, give us an advance, and maybe we can actually plug her in on the song, Come man. On, that would be cool. <laughs> Lay it down. Let us know. Uh, you can get my cell phone number from this lovely lady if you. You have, you oh, have that's my phone up there. <laughs> or, yeah, shooter, and I'll. Yeah, I will do that. Keep the message. You can you can message me on Facebook, but there's probably a ten percent chance 
I will get that message because I get lots of messages on Facebook. So text messages are. I just have the same problem. Yeah, you'd yeah. be always on there. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, just, just, I'm just overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Were I on there? <laughs> the other day I'm sitting in Pastor Randy's office. See, I'm a fuddy duddy. Yeah. Fuddy duddies fuddy don't daddy. show well, up on social media. That's just no, social no, no, media. No. His well, I'm sitting in his office the other day. We're talking about something, and it wasn't like super time sensitive. And his phone rings, and this is what normally happens when oh, somebody's irritated. When somebody, somebody's phone rings, they go like this. Who's that? Then they either I'll call them back. And so he's like, man, what's wrong with this thing? It keeps on ringing. Like that, that, that is the purpose of the device. It's just for people when they need you, it rings and you, you answer it and talk to it. But, and somehow you felt as though it was functioning outside of its yeah, purpose. It was, it was interrupting. This in incessant ringing when what? someone needs me. Uh, <laughs> well, I also like the other day you were trying to find him. So you called me. I said, oh, here he yes. is. So he talks to you on my phone. And he's like, how you hang this up? <laughs> I have never known how to hang he my says, phone up. I always just turn my phone off. I literally turn it off. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what he does. I can't be sure. sure. The, the day it rang, and his day's like, man, this whole thing, how do you turn it? And he holds it. I'm like, you just turned it off. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want that thing. He slapped it Hence, Fuddy Duddy. Fuddy Duddy honky dory. All right. We love you. We'll see you on Sunday. It's going to be a great day. 9-15, 11-15. Bye, friends. <laughs>